Uh, it's almost tour down under time, so it is tour down under preview time. Alas, this will not be your normal preview because I'm just not going to go through every single favourite and say who I think is going to do well, but I'll go through roughly. Mission has got going with Dal MP. I haven't seen much form on Strava. That's basically all I'm going to base my sort of knowledge of them. Obviously, people don't post on Strava, so it's not great. Anyway, I, he'll be good. Uh, he was absolutely flying last year. I remember when I was training with him and he was he absolutely launched at Norton Summit, and that's when I knew he was on a good one. Jay McCarthy, he'll go well. He always does. Richie Port obviously will do well. Uh, no Strava data from them too. Well, Richie Port, you do, but like I haven't really, he's been training hard, but it's, uh, yeah, like he's going to go well. Uh, Diego Lucy, I reckon, will go well. And this bloke called Tajeb Pogakar won the um, Tour de Lavenir. He, he might go okay, but Ulysses looks like he's targeting it. Valgren got lots of data on him. He's going to go well. Uh, Barring Marita, I reckon Pots of Evo will do all right. And maybe Ryan Dennis, but he doesn't look in great form. So I'd probably say Pots of Evo. Uh, Woods, Woods looks in great form. I'll show you some more detail about that. This is just for the overall for the sprints. It'll be Dan McClay, in my opinion. Uh, Caleb Ewan, Sagan, potentially. Um, I think Gibbons might get out there. Um, in a couple sprints, uh, and then like Wilshire, just the usuals to be honest. And there's probably someone, and Viviani, um, <laughs> I was gonna say, there's probably someone I forgot. Uh, anyway, somewhere no one really I think is gonna go that well. Australians might go all right. As you do what deserve a Mondial, none of them take it seriously. Um, I'd say Pierre Latour, probably all right, but I don't think anyone of them will do that well. Maybe Nico Dens, he looks like he's done a couple efforts. Astan, Luis Leo Sanchez, for me, um, he'll do all right. Katusha, Nathan House takes this pretty seriously, he'll do all right, but again, no Strava data. Uh, Group Arma FDJ, no one looks mega, but Moravito looks in good form. I'll show you some Strava stuff. Uh, Movistar, Prades, I reckon he'll probably do all right. Um, Quick Step, James Knox, probably don't know him. Have made videos on him before. I think he'll go well. And Yacht, uh, Yumbo Visma, um, again, it's sort of like anyone could go well. George Bennett looks all right, hasn't done much training. Team Sky Pools will do well. Um, CCC, I reckon Bevan looks probably okay. Um, we're actually go for the sprints, and then Uni essay. I say Chris Harper is gonna, he's gonna do, he's gonna be surprisingly good, in my opinion. And we're just gonna go through some Strava data, potentially people you haven't thought of. Um, I did miss out Valgren there as well, um, but I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, so anyway, we got Darren MP. He just arrived in Adelaide. Just did a couple um Wollonga loops. Nothing too crazy. Went up Belair Road. Just very, very cruisy. Like he doesn't show his power data, but I know these climbs relatively well, and you just sort of know. Um, so over Long Hill, eleven minutes. That's just like tempo. Uh, not even that, it's probably zone two for them, to be honest. Um, and anyway, so that's an irrelevant ride, so we won't have a, any more, another look at that. Um, Mike Woods looks like he's in serious shape. i show you some training data, so he's training on his own, I think, or no one else seems to have Strava. 270 weighted average power, so it's like 280 normalized for set, six hours. I mean, he's taking this pretty seriously, isn't he, let's be honest. Um, and we'll see some really solid efforts. So he did Greenhill, 340 watts, you can see, so he's cruising like zone three and then really does this hard effort here, about 400 watts, more or less. Um, up Greenhill, yeah. So he's, I mean, he's taking this, this he's taking this block seriously, uh, and then twenty twenty minutes, twenty eight minutes again at um sort of tempo, uh, and then he does a uh, a pretty hard Wollonga, um four hundred twelve watts for ten minutes, uh, and then he does these over unders up Wollonga again these four hundred twenty four watts for that. If you've done over unders, know that the average power generally gets killed, so that's that's very solid. Again, does another set of those, another set of those. And goes home. So yeah, he's definitely in some good form. Uh, I think he's going to go incredibly well. It really does suit him because there's the stage up corkscrew, which I think will be very well, which he'll do very well. Um, but yeah, so he's holding like six point seven watts per kilo for eight minutes, which is which is very very solid. Um, but under over unders as well, so that, that's even better. Um, and then sort of up, uh, yeah, for twelve minutes he's sort of holding like four hundred watts or so. Um, Potentially, some people say his power meter overreads. I don't think it does. I think other people underestimate how much power it takes to win what Grand Tours, because in the Grand Tours, everyone's like, "Oh, his power meter over, are like under overreads." I'm just like, "Um, no." Um, James Knox, I think is going to do very well. He's had a pretty solid. I'll show you him properly. Like he, so he took November off. He's been training pretty hard most weeks. Uh, maybe fifteen, sixteen hour weeks. So nothing absolutely nuts, but he's definitely training hard. Um, and I've got some good data here. Um, so this is up Greenhill Road again. It's a pretty solid climb. It's like twenty minute climb in uh, Adelaide. Um, and they've they've gone to see a couple of the loops. I think they went to see the Euradler loop here, and they also went to see the one which is like miles over here, which I've actually never ridden. Um, but anyway, so we will go into the efforts. Again, over-unders is the order of the day. Um, so, so probably 115% of threshold potentially, maybe 130 um, for 30 seconds and 15 seconds off. Um, and you can see again, 387 watts for six minutes, solo 366, 361. Um, but the thing is, he weighs fifty eight kilos, so you got you got to take that into account. Um, and sort of for the five six minute efforts, he's doing sort of six point eight watts per kilo. So again, looking solid, potentially not as solid solid as Woods, 
Um, but I reckon James Knox will do pretty well on this. Um, it's again steep, some steep hills. Uh, Wollonga doesn't really sue him because it's quite flat, quite fast. Richie Port's averaged like 30 k's an hour up there in the last bit when he attacks. But even so, I reckon James Knox is, is going to surprise people again. Um, and that's just based on the Strava data and based on what I've seen. I mean, I haven't been there, but like you, what you see on Strava um, and how the course plays out and what, what people say about the race. Um, again, we've got some more data, which is Valgren. Valgren takes this incredibly seriously. Um, he's out here always very early. Um, he was in Australia for New Year's, um, and yeah, he takes he likes these these rock climbs. Um, he's got a couple of KOMs actually, some pretty solid KOMs, and you can see here he did a twelve thirty solo, which up Norton's twenty six k's an hour. Like that's that's solid. That's a, that's a solid time. It's not absolutely anything absolutely nuts. Um, I'll show you what Darrell MP did last year. Um, uh, we probably had pretty we yeah, we did have pretty good wind conditions on that day. It was raining, so around the corners maybe had to slow down a little bit because it was fast climb. Um, but if we yeah, if we go. Uh, where is he, Daryl MP? He'll be up there. Oh, it's be one of those things where it's like he won't be top ten. Well, he's not top 20, ten, obviously, but his time was still mega. But he did it solo. So like last year, you would have seen his time. Oh yeah, here we go, Daryl MP. There we go, thirty fourth, eleven twenty two. I was there twelfth January. Remember that? Absolutely ruined it out there. Um, and was was flying. And that's when I knew he was done well. And Valgren did twelve thirty. But I think I reckon Valgren will do well. Might maybe a bit too hilly for the man, but I still reckon he'll do do pretty well. Uh, he also did some pretty good Wollonga time. So you can see, well, this is Wollonga for this year. So Mike Woods, fastest, 742. Obviously, wind conditions are quite a lot. Uh, Dowsett said there was a big headwind today. Uh, 817, 440 watts. Dowsett's obviously not going not gonna to win. Uh, it's too too hilly for him. But Valgren, um, 20 seconds quicker. Um, so yeah, I reckon, no, sorry, 30 seconds quicker. And I reckon Valgren will do quite well. But again, I think it's too hilly. So top 10 will be tough. And Steve Morovito, you can tell again, he's, he takes it seriously. A lot of the French guys, I think, like coming out here early. Um, and just you know, tr do some proper training. Um, I remember there was that Ezio de Zola, La Mondiale rider. Um, I can't remember his name exactly, but he yeah, he's he's pretty serious again. Dallas it was some five hour rides, classics. Um, and then you can see Valgren doing these efforts up. Well, again, over unders looks pretty pretty similar. Four fifty watts, four sixty watts, four fifty watts. But he's heavier. Um, so we'll see it. We'll see if we can get his watts per kilo out. Um. 6.3 watts per kilo for 10 minutes. I mean, it's nothing absolutely nuts. Um, but obviously, the interval is pretty solid. Um, and over-unders again. So, I think he'll do well. Um, and then last guy we're going to go through is just Steve Morabito. You can see he did 4 hours, average 30 k's an hour. Um, and yeah, did Wollonga pretty seriously. He's um, got a couple of KOMs around here, actually. You can see here, like, the Conda Paringa climb, uh, which obviously isn't that. But you can see, like, he's he was definitely doing, like, a 10-minute interval here. Like, 55 k's an hour on the flat. Um, it's pretty solid. Uh, beat a lot of guys in a race, so he's either motor pacing or he had a massive tailwind and was riding like 400 watts or so. Um, but anyway, so hope this is interesting. Uh, this is what my take is from Strava. I reckon I reckon top 10 will just be the usual favourites, but I reckon Mike Woods, James Knox are going to do well, Valgren, Valgren will do well, Darren MP, just, just the usuals. But I just reckon there are a couple, like on Strava, you can just see it. Um, it's annoying because I'm not there. Like when you ride with them, it's pretty obvious who's going well, who's not going well. Um, having said that, Viviani was literally just like riding like 200 watts up a climb because he just couldn't be bothered to keep up with his teammates and then won a stage like four days later. So, you know, the efforts are interesting. And I think Chris Harper, he did very well in nationals this year. Last year, he wasn't, he did again very well in nationals, but wasn't allowed to race because of like water things. Um, but yeah, this year, I reckon Chris Harper will do pretty well. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. Um, I'll try and do as many race report, race videos as possible, but you know, I don't want to get my, co my channel removed due to copyright strikes, so probs won't be too many. Um, but yeah, we will see. Uh, definitely some Strava analysis of the final climb. Um, I've done those before from last year, so I'll, I'll link that in the description, hopefully, um, about Richie Paul when he like smacked everyone and did like 600 watts, or no, 550 watts for the last like two minutes or something ridiculous. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.